we're about to see a Kodak moment for crypto. Today, I sit down with two Bitcoin experts. And what I mean by that is, if you think what the introduction of digital cameras did to Kodak, or what the introduction of Netflix did to Blockbuster, or what the introduction of the iPhone did to BlackBerry and Nokia, what happened was the impossible happened. To talk about the rise of the Bitcoin ecosystem, meaning tokens, coins built on Bitcoin. Players who for years had been absolutely dominant in major industry within just a few years found themselves unable to adapt to innovation and disappearing. Of course, we're speaking with Eden Yago, core contributor of Sovereign, which is DeFi for Bitcoin, and Alexi Z, co-founder of Bob, build on Bitcoin, the first hybrid L2, to talk about why the Bitcoin ecosystem today is getting in early. So Bitcoin is basically going to speedrun Ethereum's early days on steroids. And if you want to farm an airdrop, watch today's whole video, because Sovereign and Bob did team up to sponsor today's video, The NTAF, to offer early users a piece of the new Bitcoin economy. Like I'm sure anyone who's listening to your show knows about like the points programs that have been going on. It's the current meta, right? Manta uh, and Blast, etc. So Bob are doing something similar. Like the video and let's start. Austin, I love this show. Always happy to be here. And I want to jump right in just on backgrounds because Iago, you've been on the channel before, but let's start with you. What is your background? How'd you get into crypto? So my background uh, is, uh, I'll, t I'll tell this story in two ways. Uh, but from a professional perspective, I was a neuroscientist. I was working on AI before it was cool. And actually, that's how I found out about Bitcoin, because I was working on a startup trying to model uh, AI as human neural networks. And uh, I was reading a lot of network science. And in 2011, I came across the Satoshi white paper in the um, in the basement of uh, Carnegie Mellon University. And it just blew my mind. And um, I knew as I was reading it that it was fucking up all of my life plans because this is what I was going to be doing probably for the rest of my life. Um, and the reason I knew that is because um, I was really interested in the internet. I always thought that the internet was missing something really important, which is property rights. And that's why no real economy until crypto came along developed on the internet. But beyond that, when I was a young boy, um, I grew up in apartheid South Africa. My family were um, fighting against apartheid and they some of them had been um, declared terrorists. And so they had become refugees. And so between the ages of nine and 11, I was smuggling gold coins out of South Africa. Uh, to get money to my family and that and a few other um, family stories of that nature really embedded in me the importance of um, having control over your financial life um, and that that is ultimately the key to 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 your own freedom and your own sovereignty and so bitcoin just hit me like a lightning bolt and alexi how about you how'd you find crypto i mean my story is i guess not that exciting compared to you so um but yeah, so for, so for me, I, I'm a computer scientist by trade. I uh, used to work on IT security and um, doing a bachelor thesis, actually, um, one of the topics was Bitcoin. And I really got excited about not just the aspect of owning Bitcoin and sending money, but what else you can do with the tech. And, and I actually got really excited about Namecoin. So the first altcoin, you know, decentralized DNS, um, decentralizing the internet censorship resistance, um, and from there on, it was really a bit of a random walk on the research side. I worked on merge mining, wrote some of the early research papers, analyzing like, what you can do with that, what not. Um, spent some time on color coins, payment channels. And then I got the chance to do a PhD at Imperial College funded by blockchain.com. And the focus there turned into sidechains, bridges, and layer twos. Um, worked on ETH layer two designs early on, and then really spent a lot of time working on bridges, both general cross-chain bridges and specifically Bitcoin bridges. Um, and at some point, that's where I met my co-founder, Dom, and we always wanted to do more than just write papers. I kind of gave up on academia um, after two years of the PhD, you know, just writing papers and not really building stuff. Didn't really feel right. And so we did a spin out and we've been building uh, ever since. So it's been 2019, so it's, we've actually been really just building day and night, trying to do more things with Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, super excited. So my audience has seen it all in ecosystems, crypto, the Ethereum ecosystem, obviously, Solana ecosystem, Bitcoin ecosystem. 
relatively newer. Obviously, Sovereign is an OG in the space, um, but really the Bitcoin revolution is popping off today. I guess my question is like, what is the Bitcoin economy and why now? I, I have my answer to that. So um, I th let me start with why now. So three years ago, we had an upgrade introduced into Bitcoin, which fundamentally changed uh, the type of cryptography and the type of transactions you could make in Bitcoin. It was called Taproot. And a lot of people heard about it, but then sort of Taproot came and went and it looked like nothing had happened. And um, th this was because Taproot was really complicated and developers didn't know how to really get anything out of it for years. It was about two years before we saw the first real use case come out of Taproot. And that was uh, Casey introduced ordinals, um, basically introduced NFTs on Bitcoin. And this was an amazing proof of concept because it showcased what happens when you take the oldest, biggest chain, you strap on some new functionality and it goes bananas. It, uh, today, the most valuable NFTs are ordinals. The biggest NFT market is on Bitcoin. And it took over established markets like Solana or Ethereum almost overnight. And that was that really caught everyone's attention. It showed that Bitcoin, given the opportunity, is just a dynamo of growth. Not long afterwards, um, Domo introduced a way to sort of chop up NFTs in sort of like a kludgy way to create uh, 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 meme tokens. That became pretty big, but it was it was a bit of a hacky system, not really working as well. And then in December, just three months ago, Robin Linus published a paper called BitVM, and he showed that using Taproot, you could actually make Bitcoin Turing complete. You could write Turing complete uh, systems into Bitcoin. Now we're three weeks away from the halving, and the, I think this is going to be the most dramatic and exciting Bitcoin uh, cycle we've seen since the launch of Bitcoin, because I think one easy way to think about what's going to happen to Bitcoin right now is that Bitcoin is basically going to speed run Ethereum's early days on steroids. So when the halving happens, we're going to get a new token standard, basically the ERC-20 of Bitcoin called Runes. We're going to start by seeing meme coins, then we're going to see ICOs, then we're going to see massive demand for DeFi and smart contracts and DAOs and Bitcoin fees are going to go up and there's going to be a huge demand for scalability. So the question is, how is all of that need going to be answered? And it's by building uh, new Turing complete smart contract systems on top of Bitcoin. And, um, and so the next step that's going to happen after that is rollups are going to get introduced into Bitcoin. And, um, and that's going to change the game because you're going to be able to see EVM, you're going to be able to see MoveVM like Aptos, SVM like Solana, all on Bitcoin. Um, and that's going to, first of all, allow all of the users, the dApps and the liquidity to start to migrate to Bitcoin. It's going to create entirely new economies and it's going to do it with the scale of the largest chain, more than half of the market, even without any of this stuff, plus an ETF. I think this is going to be just an extremely dramatic uh, 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 sort of next two, three years. And I think it's going to take everyone by surprise because I've been to conferences, people aren't talking about this, and that's crazy in my mind. To maybe add on to that, I think like it, you already covered a lot of that, a, a lot of the points. Um, one thing to, to kind of mention there, I think beyond like the tech, the products, the innovation is also the shift in mindset. Um, I think what we've seen in Bitcoin in the last 10 years is, is really a focus on ossification and new ideas were often shunned. And I feel like a lot of my friends that started working on Bitcoin back in the day with me on the research side, many of them went to other ecosystems because they felt they could not really build new things on Bitcoin without being criticized heavily by some very like early adopters that felt Bitcoin should only be used for certain use cases. And there was always been this debate, you know, should Bitcoin be used for other things? Should it not? Should, you know, should people just leave Bitcoin and go to Ethereum and other ecosystems? And I feel with Ordinals, um, and of course the whole kind of last year, but Ordinals I feel was Bitcoin's crypto kitty moment. You suddenly had innovation coming back to Bitcoin. Yes, it was speculative, it was fun, but that's the whole point. It's like Tapper Wizards was really pushing, you know, let's bring fun back to Bitcoin. 
And suddenly you had thousands, tens of thousands of builders from other ecosystems who are Bitcoiners at heart come back to Bitcoin. If you think about it this way, we gave the community a way to do NFTs on Bitcoin and they all flooded back. Bitcoin hit some high in transactions processed and it became one of the largest chains in terms of processed NFT volume. Had you told me this a couple of years ago, I would not have believed it. So I think it's really a shift in mindset as well, because now it's okay to go and do radical things on Bitcoin. It's okay to innovate. Um, and you can see also how the media is changing, how the conferences are changing. There is conference on Bitcoin L2s, on ordinals. It's the main topic. It's no longer just lightning. And it's okay to say lightning works for some cases, but it doesn't work for others. And I think that should not be underestimated because Bitcoin, the Bitcoin community turning from perceived being perceived as slightly hostile to, to new things to welcoming is a big shift in mindset. Because if I, one thing we should consider, 90% of people who get into crypto get into crypto through Bitcoin. So if you look at all the builders, all the users of Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cosmos, they're all, many of them are Bitcoiners at heart and they just love the fact that they can bring their products back to Bitcoin. What are the negatives for building DeFi Bitcoin, building on Bitcoin? Because to me, over the next five, 10 years, why wouldn't everybody choose to build on the stronger chain? The trade-offs are always scalability that's been solved. So what 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 does this mean for the broader space looking forward? So I, I think, so right now it's still early, right? So we're not just there yet. And I think we have to be transparent about, you know, rollups are coming that we know how to do them. But it's not as easy, right? Because of course, you know, you have to do a lot of engineering. There is some complexity involved and still the tooling on the L1 on Bitcoin is still not quite there yet. That's where L2 is really becoming become powerful, but there's still work to be done to make building on the intersection of Bitcoin and EVM or other virtual machines easier for developers. Beyond that, I don't know why, why would you not build on Bitcoin? I mean, uh, if you think, if you zoom out and, and look beyond the Web3 kind of inner circle, as a new user, as a new builder that is new to Web3, where else would you build if not the largest ecosystem that suddenly allows you to do all the things, all the things that you can do on, on smaller ecosystems as well? So I think we'll definitely see a renaissance and a massive shift of, of focus back to Bitcoin over the next couple of years. I'll go further than that. So I think um, we're about to see a Kodak moment for crypto. And what I mean by that is, if you think what um, the introduction of digital cameras did to Kodak, or what the introduction of Netflix did to Blockbuster, or what the introduction of the iPhone did to BlackBerry and Nokia, what happened was um, you had a moment where the impossible happened. Players who for years had been absolutely dominant in major industries, within just a few years, found themselves unable to adapt to innovation and disappearing. We had a different moment like this with the internet. Um, we had AOL, we had Prodigy, we had a whole bunch of companies providing their own sort of networks and the internet just ate them all. And the reason was network effects. So my sense is that there's a very big risk. I, I've been um, uh, edging out of Ethereum right now. And 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 I and and based on the charts, it looks like we're I'm not the only one, because there's a very very, I think there's an existential risk to a lot of crypto, um, and if and 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 to understand why, you kind of have to understand the history. Basically, the entire crypto space, what people call the altcoin space, you know, altcoin daily, um, it emerged as an answer to the question, what can't Bitcoin do? Bitcoin can't do privacy. We'll do privacy. Bitcoin can't do scale. We'll do that. Bitcoin can't do smart contracts. We'll do that. Bitcoin can't do fast transactions. We'll do that. And so you have like different chains that are um, their entire raison d'etre. The only reason they exist is to be able to answer the question what Bitcoin can't do. What happens when Bitcoin, when the answer to what Bitcoin can't do is nothing, I think it completely turns everything upside down. Um, and I do think that We'll, we'll see an accelerated process of this happening because people will start to recognize that it's happening. They'll start to, the, the first projects to shift over to Bitcoin, the first users to shift liquidity to, to Bitcoin will gain the most. They'll be like the early players. Their success will fuel the next. And that will start to create a vicious cycle where it becomes 
um, you know, people will start talking about the flippening again, but they'll start talking about the Bitcoin ecosystem flippening first Solana and then Ethereum. And, and that's going to be scary for, for, for a lot of people. So, so I think there's an opportunity here for massive improvement to Bitcoin. There's a massive improvement for, for growing a truly trustless sort of operating system around Bitcoin and a huge improvement and leap forward for crypto. But for people who think about crypto as, as an investment, there's a huge opportunity coupled with a huge risk. Um, and I think being aware of what's going on now, it's, it's, it's one of those moments. They're rare, but when they happen, they're dramatic. Blockbuster, iPhone, Kodak. I got chills. I love having you on, Yago. Um, you break it down so easily. And just for all the new people uh, watching the video over the next few weeks, months, um, for those who have never heard of Sovereign, never heard of Bob, um, Alexi, let's start with you. What is Bob? Bob is a hybrid layer two. It aims to connect the security and liquidity of, bo of both Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the mission that we have is to bring innovation back to Bitcoin, right? Allow ETH users a very simple way, not just ETH users, but anybody else in the Web3 space to ease into Bitcoin, to be first and early adopters and just, you know, use all the existing tools, use existing products, deploy DeFi, NFTs, and let explore ways of how you can actually use that with Bitcoin and the Bitcoin ecosystem. Get early access to runes, BRCs, ordinals, but do that within a familiar environment that's powered by the same innovation that we have, like EVM and tools we already have on Ethereum, and really to speed run this whole process of adoption and getting people back to Bitcoin. And essentially, like over the next two years, Bob will inherit Bitcoin security through proof of work. And then ultimately, like many other Bitcoin layer twos, embrace BitVM as a way to settle directly to BTC, still maintaining the connection to Ethereum to keep onboarding more and more users and liquidity back into the Bitcoin ecosystem. I love it. So it's like, so in the most basic terms, it's like what Matic is to Ethereum, only the li liquidity is in terms of an L2, but it's the liquidity is shared. So it's a very compatible ETH developers can come build on Bitcoin. Close with the difference that it's also connected to Bitcoin. So it sits right between the two largest ecosystems and it will be fueled by liquidity from both BDC and ETH and also the stable coins. And it just gives us a head start. It allows us to be integrated with native stable coins, blue chip assets, easy integration with exchanges from day one, skipping a lot of the you know early hurdles for adoption and just letting people start using Bitcoin DeFi, Ruins Ordinals, BRC20s, right away, right at the havoc. I see Bob as a giant oil tanker. Um, I think there's going to be almost inevitably a big and growing migration of funds, developers, users uh, into the Bitcoin ecosystem. And the number one place they're going to come from is Ethereum, because that's the number one place where they currently are. And the vehicle that they're going to use, and the reason I call it an oil tanker is because it's going to have to be big. The, the vehicle they're going to use is Bob. So I actually don't really see eye to eye with a lot of how Alexei views Bob. I think he um, undersells it in some ways and doesn't really understand what he's actually built. But in my view, what he's built is the the primary sort of bridge, like, uh, you know, that it, it, he's built the ecosystem that is going to be at the center. I, I'll put it into one sentence. I once took a course in university in finance and I, I, I hated the course. I thought it was stupid, but everything of value that I got out, I got out in the first five minutes of the course. The professor walked onto stage and he said, everything you need to know about finance is it's basically this. It's the art of finding a giant river of money and standing in the middle of it. I think Bob have found the giant river of money and is standing in the middle of it. And how sovereign fit in? What is sovereign? So Sovereign is a project that has um, pioneered the idea of, of DeFi on Bitcoin and building additional functionality on Bitcoin. We recognized where Taproot and Rollups uh, would likely take us uh, three years ago, uh, four, almost four years ago right now. And, and so we started building towards this world that we see emerging now. Um, and in the process, a community of open source developers has developed um, incredibly dedicated people who have been building on Bitcoin for years, building on Ethereum. It, 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 was, it became a melting pot of developers from both worlds. And together they've built 
um, what has become the largest DeFi platform uh, in Bitcoin. Um, and um, you know, we've got trading, we've got uh, leverage trading, we've got borrowing and lending, we've got Bitcoin-backed stablecoins, the, the most secure stablecoin in the world. Um, and it's all deeply decentralized and sort of comes with a, with, a, with a deep Bitcoin ethos of security, but also a move fast ethos, ethos of Ethereum. Um, and um, yeah, Alexei, we've known him because he's, you know, there's been like a handful, like I could count them on my hands and my toes, how many people were building on Bitcoin uh, three years ago, how many people saw what's coming back then. Alexei was one of them, he published some interesting papers, he built some stuff. Uh, and when he started telling us about Bob, um, we we started looking into it and we realized that it is likely a giant oil tanker and we wanted to get some of that oil. So you guys are just, please, maybe just please. to like, like, Sovereign, like Eden, I, we like was the first person I called up when we basically had con like more concrete idea of what we're building. Because ultimately Sovereign is like, if you think about Bitcoin DeFi, Sovereign is the OG, right? Like Bitcoin DeFi, you go to Sovereign. Because nobody else dared to touch it. There have been attempts like on other L2 side chains, right? But ultimately, like what I find really cool about this is managing to build a community around Bitcoin DeFi before it was cool, while it was still frowned upon, where it was super hard to really DeFi pill Bitcoiners and building that super strong community. And that community is not going to spearhead this entire orange tsunami and everybody else is just going to follow. So we're super excited, obviously, to, to be working with, with Sovereign to, to basically, yeah, take Bitcoin DeFi on this, I guess, journey on the oil tanker. So one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys on, because I've seen press releases, there is a partnership. There is something for the audience. If the audience was wanting to get into Bitcoin DeFi, what is this partnership? So I can talk about it from the perspective of, of, of a developer, you know, a project he's building on Bob and also a user. So um, when Bob launches, we expect it to play the function of the primary sort of Bitcoin sphere in the Ethereum world and the bridge between the two worlds. And um, so Sovereign is, first, of, for, first and foremost, we're going to be launching um, our Bitcoin uh, tooling. So we're launching a DEX. We're going to be introducing Bitcoin backed stable coins. We're also going to be bringing all the Bitcoin uh, native tokens to be tradable on Bob. So like runes, we're bringing them. We're going to provide functionality for DAOs around them, for a launch pad around them, etc. cetera. Um, in the short term, uh, one of the things that we've done is that um, Bob have introduced a way to make it really attractive for users to um, sort of step into this world of, of the new um, sort of the, the new Bitcoin, the Bitcoin uh, uh, renaissance. And um, the way they're doing this is, I, like, I'm sure anyone who's listening to your show knows about like the points programs that have been going on. It's the current meta, right? Manta uh, and Blast, et cetera. So Bob are doing something similar. And um, the sovereign community voted. So this is a decentralized project. So everything is done um, but via the DAO. The, 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 the sovereign community decided to place um, part of our treasury into that project, uh, accrue points, and then redistribute points to people who come uh, through Sovereign. So Sovereign sort of is doing a points on points program. If you want to participate in Bob's uh, uh, points program, you can come through Sovereign. You can earn um, by coming through Sovereign an additional 50% points. Plus, you're going to get uh, an airdrop of uh, some of the first runes in the world. And technical question, what are runes versus BRC20s? They're not the same thing. Is runes a better BRC20? Alexei, you want to take that? I mean, it's so runes are something that was created by Casey himself, right? In an attempt to improve the way that you can create fungible tokens on top of inscriptions. BRCs were the first, they're very easy to use, but they caused some issues in, in the Bitcoin space. Like there's a lot of UTXOs, so things that just get left over and increase the, the data size of the UTXO set. And that has caused a bit of a stir up in the Bitcoin community because it obviously bloats the network and especially like nodes. 
And with runes, you you kind of mitigate that. It's uh, I arguably you could say a, a more longer term thought through design that allows us to create fungible assets on Bitcoin that is more in line with how Bitcoin's UTXO model is designed. The cool thing about it, I guess, thinking about layer twos is that it looks like it will be really friendly with SPV proofs, so like client verification, much easier to verify without downloading the entire data that like really tracing every transaction back to the, to the original genesis. And that just makes it more friendly for adoption, for mobile wallets, for really um, also systems like Bob, which you can now really cryptographically verify on Bob what's happening with runes on Bitcoin. And that just allows us to, or makes runes more friendly towards bridging, towards cross-chain swaps and settlement, which obviously makes us very excited because we love runes. We want to see more of that. And we want to see them on Bob and we'll build tooling and infrastructure, obviously spearheaded by Sovereign to make that available to every single ETH user that wants to get into runes early, basically almost on day one. Having tried to build uh, with BRC20s, I can tell you it's really hard. Uh, runes is just a much cleaner standard and I think is going to be um, more powerful, cleaner, easier to use and see much more developer adoption. I want to ask you more about the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem in general, but um, this this airdrop that you mentioned and farm farm for points, how can how can the audience take advantage? Um, well, I can I can tell you that by easily the the best way to do it is through Sovereign because of the fifty percent bonus that we provide, um, and because of the extra runes that you get, and because we have a really cool interface. Uh, so <laughs> that's actually really easy. You can go to um, uh, go bob dot sovereign s o v r y n dot app, and 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 um, it's an easy uh, interface. Um, I would suggest reading about it. You can click into the link in, in the wiki and read more about it. But to be fair, um, while it may not be the intelligent thing to do, you can independently use Bob's, uh, Bob built their own uh, interface. Um, and um, I actually don't remember the URL for it. Uh, do you? It's under fusion.cobob.xyz. And then obviously you, if you scroll down, you can see read on the details. You can also find partner programs, including Sovereign's, um, and then we have partner programs by blockchain OKX, um, and then you can you know educate yourself and decide you know how you want to participate, what you want to do. Um, and we're only running for another three weeks before we're going to mainnet, and then we go to season two, which is obviously the most exciting of all. You can then finally use DeFi, NFTs, ordinals on Bob, and then continue obviously harvesting spice as we call it, so points at spice. Um, to become a core player in the Bob ecosystem, be early and obviously become then a core member of Bob's community as we scale and, and really try to bring the Bitcoin renaissance um, upon the entire Web3 space. Links for both of you, both your companies down below. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. I have such a better understanding of Bitcoin on DeFi, the new ecosystem. I want to end with this sort of a, a hot take, very open-ended. Yago, I want to start with you. Based on this new Bitcoin revolution, in that in a ten-year time span, what's a hot take you may have? For example, is Solana irrelevant now, or is will this blast Bitcoin's price even higher? Any hot take, big picture? So first of all, yes and yes. I think Bitcoin uh, dominance is going to grow, but even more than Bitcoin dominance, we're going to see Bitcoin ecosystem dominance grow. Um. I'm, I've, so, but I've got two hot takes, which are maybe less obvious. One, and this will piss off the maxis, um, Bitcoin is going to become the number one place to trade tokens, uh, NFTs, uh, and all of the horrible, lovely, exciting stupidity of the speculation and Ponzinomics that we've seen in other places is going to come to Bitcoin. There's nothing we can do about that. It's the, it's the downside of freedom. Um, my biggest hot take, is that what this is going to do is it's going to ultimately, though, end a lot of that or massively reduce the impact of speculation in crypto. Because I think that what crypto is now good. So Bitcoin is 14 years old. In, in four years, it'll be 18 years. It will be an adult. And it's supposed to take its position as the global financial system. And I think the technology 
that is being developed on Bitcoin today is what's going to allow Bitcoin to mature and take on that role. And so I think we're going to see a massive, over the next four and then 10 years, we're actually going to see crypto mature to be what everyone has always said, you know, uh, it's actually going to be the system that we all use for our daily finance. I'm hearing you loud and clear. And Alexi, I want to end with you. Hot take, final thoughts. I mean, there's not much to add, but a bit of a hot take is we started this conversation with, you know, there's so many other things that, you know, all the, pre the premise of many altcoins was what can a Bitcoin do? And I think one of the big flippings that I want to see, and I think we'll see, is stable coins. Right now, Tron dominates. But think about it. Bitcoin is known everywhere. Any news outlet that reports about the crypto space, it's Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up, people talk about it. Bitcoin goes down, people talk about it. If someone adopts crypto, it's always Bitcoin. I If you go on, like, right now people use USDT because Bitcoin was so, like, a lot of the core community was so focused on lightning, 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 and that's not user-friendly. People don't necessarily want to pay with Bitcoin. What they want, however, is stable coins on Bitcoin or backed by Bitcoin. And Bitcoin backs stable coins as a means of payments and transaction. And I think over the next couple of years, up until the next Bitcoin halving, the flipping that I want to see, and I think we'll see, is Bitcoin flipping Tron and everybody else in stablecoin volume. Bitcoin will become, and the ecosystem as a whole with layer tools and sidechains will become the main place to transact with Bitcoin backed stablecoins. And of course, USDT, USDC, and all these new, um, more centralized, but still currently globally most well adopted USD backed stable coins. That's something that I think will really drive adoption. And Bitcoin is perfectly positioned to do that.